Hello and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode 508 at scavengerlife.com. Today I would like to talk about one of my favorite topics. Tell me what you think that might be. <laughs> there's like there's like four things that okay. came to mind, none of which we're probably going to talk about. Time and resource management. Okay, well, that is one of them for sure. <laughs> the other T was and, Tesla. <laughs> and, and I hope I'm not one of those. Yeah, okay. Um, so, you know, we've, this is really kind of, let's not even think about these people. This is like kind of a business meeting we're having together. <laughs> So I'm just talking to you. Other people. Okay. So, you know, we've, we been, go. we've been dealing a lot with stress of just time. Yes. Lots of going on. Yes. We're adding this coffee shop roaster business into our lives and yes. have been for the past year. Yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. We started like February of last year renovating yeah. the uh, roaster building. Yep. Um, so it's been over a year, you know, and so we're trying to work this into our lives. We want it to be in our lives. How do we make it happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like, in my mind, we've kind of gotten over the hump. And we're starting to figure out where that time sits now. Like, the amount of time. And I just want to talk about that. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have three businesses. We have eBay. Yeah. That I think a lot of people are here for. We run an eBay business. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's not not ending anytime soon. It's a pipeline. I still love finding stuff. We list it. It sells. We ship. It's crazy. We make money. Yeah. Uh, we have a rental business. Vacation rentals. We've built up over the past, what, 2015? Well, we bought our first rental in 2011. Right. It was a slog. <laughs> but it didn't get rented until 2015. A slog. So. <laughs> but like six years of that, yeah, uh, kind of being a business. And now we have this coffee shop and roaster business. So... It's just taken so much time trying to get this thing ready, but we're so close to opening. <laughs> so close. <clears throat> but we have two partners in our roaster coffee business, mm-hmm. uh, and we've sat down with them, and we've kind of like had a meeting just like this. Yeah. And where we said... Many meetings. You guys deal with the front of house, the cafes. Right. Because that's their expertise. Because now we're buying into their company, and so we have two cafes, one in Harrisonburg, Virginia, one in Luray, Virginia. And then we are going to handle the roasting side. Yeah. Since you are a roaster now slash Q grader. Yes. And I'm a great resource manager. AKA. Bagger. <laughs> Putting coffee in bags. Yeah. Organizing hey, that's all important. that. important. Yeah. And ship it. So we're kind of right. handling like the back of house. So we right. roast all the coffee. Yeah. We bag all the coffee and we ship all the coffee. Yes. And, and so that... Just three things. The coffee that needs to be sold to make coffee in the cafes. Right. The the coffee that needs to be bagged to sell in the cafes right. because people grab a bag. So, and, so we call that bulk. Right. And then we call that on the shelf. Right. Retail. Retail. And then we have online sales where people order off of our, our right. website and we ship that and roast coffee for wholesale, right? which is a growing part of the business where we're roasting coffee for a couple bakeries, a restaurant, a co-op, like um, a grocery store, another shop down south of right. us that sells cool camping gear and right. stuff. We send yeah. bags to them. And that's good for us because that's our wheelhouse. We oh, like to, for sure. We like to put our head down and really it's kind of about 20 hours a week. Mm-hmm. It's two days. Where me and you go in from about 10 o'clock to 4 or 5. Depending. Right. You know, it's like a four to five hour roast day with, you know, an hour or so on each end to yep. clean up and just get and ready. Like and that's that, perfect yeah. for us. And I feel like yeah. that was really helpful for us. So now we know Mondays, Thursdays, coffee business. We do go into town and ship on the other days. Right. Correct. So we make sure if orders came in and we have that bulk to pack. Right. We do it. Right. So, order coffee. And, you know, if I'm going to put my Giru hat on. Giru. <laughs> uh, you know, I, we talk a lot about the reason why we love Saloon eBay was yes, we bought our time. Yes. On our own time. I can't keep saying that because that is what makes me feel like a millionaire. Yeah. You know? But when you own your own time, it comes with a lot of responsibility. Yes. And it's kind of what we're talking about right here. Right. Because things can really... Get away from us. Right. If we don't kind of 
deal with our time correctly because it's really easy. I, I know the instinct sometimes is to just like, just like shut down. Like, I don't want to think about these things. You know, I don't want to do these things, but you know, we, we have to. Well, I think that it is like a puzzle piece, yeah. puzzle pieces where like you just are doing, I mean, that that's honestly the beauty of having your own time is that you're like, okay, the first two hours of my day is X, Y, and Z. And then I'm going to go into town. I'm going to do these things and make sure they get done. Yep. Then I'm going to go do... Th- I mean, that's what our days look like. Even yeah. when we're roasting, right. it's like before anything is ready to bag, right. you're running around town doing stuff. And, and then you, you know, and then you, you know, I'm warming up the roaster and getting right. it ready. And then you're like, okay, now we're ready to bag to get everything to the post office by 4.30 right. and to whoever's going back to Harrisonburg to fulfill right. the orders there. And no one had to tell you to do that. Right, you exactly. I, like, well, also, sort of, you, along with your partners, if you have partners, you figure out, how, you know, you sort of coordinate with people, like, I'm going to do this because I know it needs to get done. Does this seem correct? Okay, let's go with that. Right. Um, what do you need so I can get it to you in the right time? You know, right. like, it's not like anybody had to tell us to do that. We were just like, this needs to happen on right. this day, you know? I mean, that's very well said. And it's hard. You know what? Like, I was t- I was actually talking to my mom about this, um, just in general, because she's always been self-employed, and my dad's always been self-employed, and that's who I, like, learned it from, where, you know, she's just saying, like, not everybody is built for this. Like, not everybody is built for having that... Uh, number one level of responsibility, but number two, like the action to get those responsibilities done. Like just some people can't do that. So I think that's why some people are like, you know, can't do eBay, don't want to do eBay. They're like, well, I just can't get myself motivated to get right. it done. You like know? they love the idea of like being their boss and yeah. having their time and not having an alarm clock to wake up to. But then, but then they don't get anything done. But then, yeah, they went so like every day is Which just I Saturday. Get. I mean, I wake up and they're like my cat is hanging out next to me, and I'm like, oh, you're gonna sleep all day. I wish I could do that, but well, but I don't. You know, I think what you said was smart. Uh, yeah, as our own bosses, we like variety and choice, but yes. it's also necessary for us to have consistency in a schedule, and that yeah. I don't know. It's very hard. That makes no sense. It's kind of a paradox, <laughs> and it's hard to yeah, kind of explain that to someone that is it in the middle of it. Like okay, well, so here's an example, real quick, just to interrupt you. There's a level like with eBay. I have my handling time on three days because I had it on same day, like one day. And it was so hard. Like it got to a point where I was like, "We can't." And do I think this. that was when eBay was really like the forefront. It was like right. the number one thing we were doing right. all the time. And you got a discount if you were a top rated right. seller, et cetera, et cetera, blah blah blah. So I guess what I'm saying is this: every day I wake up, and the first thing I do before I do anything else is I pack eBay stuff to go out. But there's flexibility in that. Because I have three-day handling, I actually don't have to do that every day. So there are days where I'm like, I'm going to pack the easy stuff. I'm going to get that stuff, you know, clothing, whatever. I'm going to get that stuff out to the post office today. And then that 20-inch glass vase that has to go to California, (laughs) I'm going to do that when I get home tonight or first thing tomorrow morning and everything else can wait. So at the same time as those things having to get done... Uh, there's some flexibility there where I'm like, I'm kind of going to like make this happen on my own time, but right. I'm definitely going to do it. I think there are some people and I've met people like this and I, and I'll talk to them about it and I'll, I won't understand it where I'm like, so, you know, you needed to do that thing. And there was a deadline that you kind of had yourself, but then you still never did it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't understand that. I'm like, yeah. so why not? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I say, <laughs> I get it. to start an eBay business, sometimes the best thing to do is to also 
go to therapy. I don't know. Some well, of it is like you have to work out. Things. People have to work out issues they have with, you know, self worth and motivation and sure. depression and anxiety. Right. There's you know, that. Things, oh, and like you know, you know, um, you know <laughs> analysis paralysis right. is a big part of all those things where you're like, well, it's got to be perfect, and what if it breaks on the way there and yeah. I can't do it? And yeah. But it really does remind me of like some kind of college philosophy class where you know do we really have free will you know i'm like we are our own bosses right and i like to be able to do anything i want but i gotta actually get these very specific things done in order to pay your bills like in an actual schedule and i guess that's the challenge where we always talk about is like you're trying not to build a sweatshop for right. yourself where yeah it's my sweatshop like i'm the owner but i'm also the slave in my I'm own i'm grinding sweatshop. it out and, nine to five and i think house. that's i think that's what we are always and maybe people over the past couple months have heard it in our voices yeah it can start feeling like um i you know i'm creating something i don't necessarily like because it was just yeah, a yeah. lot of stress going on yeah. but now that we've kind of established this like a, a monday th- thursday routine right it's like okay i can look at our week and and kind of put know, things in place yeah it's not as nebulous and yeah. the other thing i i think is important that we've learned is that we can do anything for a year you know yeah like i think with this coffee business we're like okay we could do this monday thursday roasting for a year for a year and if we hate it after a year then we can change i mean we we talk to our partners right. about it where maybe this isn't our lives for the next 20 years is a roasting, roasting. Monday, thursday. <laughs> yeah. and maybe they're gonna roast or phil's gonna roast or and then we do the cafes for a, a while right. you know like we can mix it up um right but you know this is how we built our lives is that you know the early parts are often pretty painful yeah because there's a lot of work to do it's not paying you any money it's upfront work it's upfront work you you don't know if it's even the right choices yes (laughs) that's like you know and so we can handle that for a year renovating a building it's like it's a lot of work but after a year i'll know if it pays off or not and then we go from there right exactly but we have to put that one year into it. Right. You know? And I think I think also like I've seen a couple different scenarios. It's it's interesting that you brought that up because um I've seen the scenario where it takes a year or more. Like there are situations where people are like, Oh, this you know, we've seen people redo houses where they are redoing a house for ten years. And you're like, why? <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, we actually have a neighbor who's like had the an unfinished house for f- over five years, <laughs> and he lives in it. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, like, I mean, do you guys have? Do you and have a toilet? Just to be clear, it's not like it's like he hasn't painted the walls. It's like he doesn't have a what's it called a, a habitation permit? Yeah, like, like an occupancy permit. Right, he doesn't have that. Like, so you're like, okay, it, so. Like, I think he might not have walls, you know, like, yeah, it, it's just it's unfinished. Wall. It's unfinished. It's an unfinished house. But that's, and yeah. So, so, so you're like, okay, you know, and, and I understand like, there's like a lot to do to finish. Yeah. But so, so it's interesting to talk about a year where you're like, can we get this thing done or established in a year? Well, to me, you know, that's kind of like an arbitrary, but you know, it's like a good whole number yeah, I think that a lot of people want things to happen quickly. Quick, I like quicker, things to happen yeah. quickly. I like, I'm, yeah. you know, like give me a week, a month, maybe, but a yeah. year. It's hard to wrap my yeah, head around. But we've, I mean, it really helps that we're partners in all of this because mm-hmm. I can just think of it like me and you, week by week, a year will come. But you know, right. that's really important because I see a lot of people like on a you know who start eBay stores who. If it's not doing well after a month, they like start questioning what yeah. the problem is, and I'm just like, man, it's gonna probably take you more than a month to establish, yeah, like a pipeline that's gonna generate you money. And, well, and, yeah. and, and it's also like, and this is in terms of eBay and in our other businesses where you're trying to build an actual like long term sustainable business. Right. 
where this is the really hard push like with our renovations and with the coffee shop it's it's really similar the the last push is so stressful and expensive and just like insanity mentally and physically and like all these things for everyone and then you start and it's like Oh, all that work, like this is what we are working for. So so yeah. not that there's not work every day and there's not maintenance and there's, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the initial right. perfection push. Want the, once the m- m- machine is built. Right. Like it just it, goes. Keeping it going. It's just like, and once you build the it's eBay pipeline, it's actually relatively yeah. easy just to kind of right. keep throwing things in it. And, and yes. I, I think also you brought up a good point too that – you know, the kind of businesses that we're trying to build are like long term established yes. income generating businesses. Right. So that's why I'm like, you know, when I'm going to bed and I'm like, I hate all of this, like, this is too stressful. Yeah. Why am I doing this? I'm yeah. like, oh, because when we're done, this is going to be a business that I hope is going to keep generating us income for, for 20 long time. years. And we talked to our, it was important. We talked to our partners in this coffee business. I mean, you know, whether or not, we all stick to it or not. I hope we do, but we've all said we want this to be a long-term local business. business. Like this is a 20 year business we're creating together. We're not creating a business that we hope to sell. Yeah. Like next year. That's not the point. And I think then your, your motivations are much different. Well, your motivations and your process are much different because, you know, when I've talked to other people who are trying to establish other types of retail businesses, and and they've said things like, well, I'll get it going. And then within like three or four years, I'll just sell mm. it. And I'm like, this level of perfection and push that we're doing right now, I would never do that if I was just trying to flip a business right. or flip a house or whatever, you know? Um, so unless you're really trying to be high end, but like... It's just, it's such a different motivation where you're like, this is my next 20 to 30 years. Right. That's the point. Right. Yeah. Same with eBay. Right. Like. I'm and, not shutting my eBay And it's store just down. like our list it and forget it. Yeah. Attitude with eBay is that we put all the work up front. Right. Mostly. To get yeah. 8,000 items yeah. into our store and to maintain that. It's a lot of yeah. work up front. Yeah. But now it kind of pays off because like yeah. whether we are putting things up on eBay every day or not, it doesn't really matter as yeah, much because we have sells. we have all that work has been done and things are just selling. And constantly. you have a process and a system. We can right like now. slack off for a month or two. Yeah. Not even put one single item up. Yeah. And things are still selling and, and that's nice. And just like with our our uh, are uh, rentals. I mean, there have been times this past year where we haven't actually been to our rentals. I was going to say that in several months, it, like, unless there's a maintenance issue or something needs right. to happen in the yard, or right. you know, we need to refill the propane tank. But, but our cleaners are going there after and checking every everything, flip, and making sure everything's okay, and they keep you know, and they tell us what's going. They on. They keep everything stocked. But I don't actually have to be there every single day or every single time. So, like, that's a really good example, like. I am thinking about the house that you were kind of pointing towards it, that house over there. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a, lo- it was really stressful by the end. Sorry. And, um, I remember just when we finished it, it, it it's just amazing because it's just all that house is always booked. It's one of our most popular rentals right. and, like we don't even have to go over there unless we ch- want to. We're going to change out one of the couches in right. a couple of weeks, and like I'm going to power wash the deck. But yeah. like, um, we are. It just runs itself. Yeah. Like we run it, and our cleaners run it, and they clean it, and they stock it, and it's like ready to go. Yeah. But like I don't have to be over there every day, yeah. which is ideal. Yeah. So it's great. Same with eBay. I don't have to do it every right. day, and and that's what, what I hope we're doing with this coffee shop and we've actually talked to our partners about it. Like what's the ultimate goal? Yeah. Long-term business. Right. It's like a business we all own for 20 years, get more integrated into the community and become, you know, part of all that. And then, uh, as we set up these systems, because we talk about that and they're on board, we could actually start hiring people to do those, to do those day-to-day tasks. And then, then all, all four of us get more and more like, 
more just like supervisors, like not right. having to like show up from eight to four every yeah. single day. We could have other people roast coffee. Yep. And you we can just train other people check to check on do it. it and we deal with just like finding more wholesale customers, you know, exactly. like that kind of thing. So exactly. And look, like read any any small business book, like what's that one called? It's called like the E what is it called? The E myth. The E myth. Okay, like anytime I'm on some entrepreneurial myth. Yeah, yeah the E myth. Okay, that's what yeah. it is. It was written in the nineties, but like um I I sometimes I'll see on Reddit someone will link to it in like right. flipping or whatever. Yeah, it's just it's kinda of corny, but it's I mean, corny, but what they what he says, like I'll right. sum it up in like a paragraph. What he says is Learn your trade. His example is like a pie maker, right. this woman who's like a baker. She loves making pies. She loves making at home. pies, right? Yeah. So she creates a store, a pie bakery, and she's burning herself out because all she does is make pie. Yeah. She makes pie between. And he's like, okay, teach someone to do what you do and right. then hire them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a so difference. So you can between, do the other things. Right. Like she likes to make a pie for her kids. But then if she's actually do, making pies eight hours a day, she's creating she has a sweatshop. A sweatshop. For herself. Yeah. So, so that's what we talk about, um, you know, and that's why this week, actually, uh, our partners hired a bunch of people for, the, for our location. Yeah, we hired seven people to start with because, you know, it's a lot. It, we're going to be open seven days a week, eight to three. And, and uh, it's part-time people and right. full-time people. Right. So... That's them being like right. they can't do it themselves. Right. We can't do it ourselves. Right. Like and, we need other people. And there. that training starts on Monday, Monday tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. So we're like, it's really, real. It's yeah. really real. But that's why we're glad we have partners because we have been helping on that part, kind of way on the edges. But really, yeah. they are they're the ones who are in charge of getting this cafe like open operationally because that's. That's their wheelhouse. They've worked in restaurant and bars their whole Absolutely. lives, so that's their whole thing. Yeah. So yeah, that's. Uh, I feel better about our time. I don't know about you, but you know, is this called the J myth or the what do we call it? <laughs> it's the rich J poor J. <laughs> Oh my god! Maybe, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that's what uh, I'm calling it. I will say I was. I've, I've been thinking about that. You know, in this. Modern society 2021. Yeah. I really feel like we're just surrounded by these large corporations that keep getting bigger and bigger and yep. bigger. You know, Amazon. Yep. Selling everything. I mean, it's just, but I really think that if people, I mean, I know for us it's worked. We have been able to establish little small businesses that pay all our bills, going to take care of us. Hopefully, probably into our future old age. Yeah. And it's fine. And it's just like kind of old fashioned mom and pop businesses. I just feel like there's so much opportunity out there in especially little small towns, little medium sized towns, just to like if people just stop thinking that they need to make millions of dollars, you could probably build a business that makes you a hundred thousand dollars. If you just, you know, find the right thing and put your time into it. Well, and lower your bills. And are dedicated to it. Yeah. Look, like, dude, it's all about being in an affordable place. Like, if you are in a place that the cost of living is more than you can afford or more, like, that's why we moved here. San Francisco was more than I wanted to afford and I could just only see it going up. Right. And it did. So it was just like, no. No. Yeah. And that, to me, was the number one thing that yeah. started all of this. Okay, uh, let's eBay specifically. We switched to the premium subscription. Yes. April 1st. I don't know if these people were saying April 1st was the day. So on May 1st, yeah. we get switched over. So here's the deal with our okay. store. Because there's a thread going on the forum that I think I started where I was like, how do I know I'm not going to get that early termination fee? Right. Because when we closed down our small store, because we had a second store for a long time, when we closed that down, I was like, I don't want a store subscription over here anymore. I had an early termination fee, and they were very clear about that. So I wonder with our store, because our store subscription renewed on, on May 1st anyway, so I wonder if we didn't get an early termination fee in mm. quotes because they were like, okay, we'll pay for April, and then your next one right. 
will be this lower one because yeah. that's your turnaround time, whatever. Yeah. In terms of not having a say, say you just resubscribed in January, or whatever, and you're like, well, now I want to downgrade. You just, I don't know how to make sure that there isn't an early termination fee. Do you yep. call? Do you message eBay for business? I don't know the right answer. Yep. I'm assuming they're going to waive it because they said they were going to waive it for yeah. all of April. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm actually not as stressed about like how it's all going to happen. I'm just glad that we can do it. So we're going to go from paying two ninety nine a month to have an eBay store, three hundred dollars a month to going to fifty nine dollars a month, sixty dollars a which month. Which is great. So that is a huge I mean, amount of money off. That's going to be like basically we can pay our electric more two electric bills. Yeah, you know, that's that, like so. huge. Yeah, eBay, nice. Jesus. <laughs> so with some of the other changes, I saw someone was saying that there's going to be no more promoted credit. So Yeah, so stores, I don't know which stores it was that got credit. I think it was like mainly all, stores? all I don't know. A lot $30 of anyway. It was $30 yeah. a month right. promoted listing credit. And people would really, I didn't pay attention to that. Um, I would just like do promoted listings. And if I got that credit, right. I did. It was, we've, okay. So we've offered a quarterly $25 promoted oh, $25. credit for anchor sellers oh. and enterprise and a okay. quarterly $30 promoted a quarterly. for eBay top rated got sellers. Got it. Uh, we offer these promotional credits when we introduce promoted listings to allow right. sellers to try the new program. Over the years, the program has grown and provided increased visibility for millions of eBay sellers. Mm. We'll continue to offer the promotional credits through March 31st, but then after that. Okay, that's yeah. over. So we're so, in April. It is going to be interesting. Someone was saying that they were going to stop paying or they weren't going to pay for, you know, so they're going to stop promoting things. And then... Um, just see if their sales go up or down. Yeah, I yeah. took all my promoted listings off yesterday. Wow, there you go. I was like, yeah. why should I pay? For Honestly, like, if I'm on eBay, I don't need to pay more to be on eBay. Like, I just think it's, I'm just like, yeah. we don't sell commodity items. Right. It shouldn't matter. So I turn them off. Yeah. I don't want to pay for it. Because... Some of us that sell these weird, funky, vintage items, you know, we will see where you do a search and there's only 20 of the item. And then our promoted item is like next to our regular. Yeah, item, I'm you know? just like, so, I know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We will see. Let, I guess we'll see. see if our numbers go down, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is Mike Cottage, who seems to be always on top of like all these changes. <laughs> Mike Cottage knows everything. Uh, they say that... Um, eBay, I mean, again, it's very nebulous, is going to start introducing the ability to upload a video on eBay. You know, e eBay took that away. You can't have any active elements in your items like a, a YouTube embedded thing. You can't anymore. embed it, but I think you can link somehow to a YouTube. Yeah. I don't uh, know what the rules are. I'm not are. sure, but I guess, although eBay is not being very clear, they say... It's coming soon, but no one knows exactly is eBay going to be hosting videos. And the reason why this is important is people who are selling things that move. Or make like, noise. I want to show like a music box. Right. Uh, I want to show like a projector in action. Right. You know? Like S Stephen Schultz is like yeah. the king of this. And then people were even saying like in young people are now, you know, they sell things on like TikTok, TikTok and, you know, and where everyone just expects there to be Look, a Look, eBay should have... Okay, when you and I first met, um, mm -hmm. this is in 2004, yeah. I sold a bunch of stuff on eBay because um, I moved in with you. So I mm -hmm. sold a bunch, I had a bunch of vintage clothes and stuff. And I made videos and yeah. I put them on my own server and yep. I linked to them yep. of me modeling clothes or like showing records or whatever. And this is, it's funny. This was like way before I even thought about us doing it on eBay. We were into Craigslist and. We actually even started a site called Hunt and Gather. Yep. And, it was a video Craigslist. And we, you know, and this was in our, uh, when we were working in software in Silicon Valley and stuff. And yeah. we even had a buddy who was like a coder. And we, we were, were like, she going to code it? it. Just back then, the being able to host all that video Content it was so expensive it was, was almost impossible but yeah the the idea was way back when was that instead of people posting a photo they could post post a, a video a video of the thing they wanted to i mean sell. it seems so it seems so obvious like i can't believe they haven't done it yet yeah like 
when you click on real estate um, listings nowadays, uh, a lot of them will have like video walkthroughs and they're just embedded. Like you're mm. like, you're like photo, 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 video embed. Yep. Play. Yep. eBay should have the same thing. I was just thinking we found this like duck call. What was it that you found on the street? I don't know. It's something where you twist it and... No, you, you like crank oh, it. Oh, you crank it. Yeah. And I can't tell if it's like an old-fashioned... call? Horn for a car? Or I don't know like, what ah, it is. Or if it's like, a, yeah, like a... So I was... I. It was sitting in our house and I brought it up to my office to take photos of it. And I was like, this is the perfect thing that I would need a video for. So you can right. hear the sound and show it so that I can show other people yeah. this is what this thing is. So, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to look up how to do a video. But that being right. said, I honestly would not want to start having to create photos for, I mean. Not for, for, everything, for everything. But, right. like, if you have a stereo right. and you're, you want to show, hey, this works, play. I understand. All this stuff. Yeah. Let me explain it to you, Jay. Yeah, explain to me again in the same way. Again, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I just would not want to have to be, like, there be an expectation of, like, for of every them. single item is, like, here is... A shirt, you know, it's like, it's, although, it's here. Although I will say this, that it might be cool to do videos for objects that are really large, where you could kind of walk around it and show the mm -hmm. scale. Anyway, I'm a video producer. Yeah. This is what I think about. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Moving uh, on. Yeah, right. uh, let's talk about our numbers. Uh, okay. This week, we sold uh, 46 items. Mm -hmm. A lot of items. Yep. The, um, I'm telling you, it's that stimulus check. The stimmy. Um, I'm telling you. Our total we'll sales were $2,279.11, but that includes taxes, fees, all that stuff. Our selling costs were $711.83. Yeah. And our net sales in our pocket, money in our pocket, was $1,451.17. Look, that, uh, that coyote cost $200 to ship, so mm -hmm. I wonder. Well, I guess that counted for last week. I don't know. It just depends it, it, when you shipped it, yeah, or yeah, printed that label. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, right. shipping labels were definitely more expensive, probably because of that. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was a good week. Just a lot of cool, fun, random items. You know, yeah, it's very really random, very fulfilling. But there were some days where stuff was just selling, selling, selling. Like every yep. hour, it was a sale, and I'm like. People got their stimulus checks because the, I I just you're just so onto that because right? it was so crazy. Yeah. I was just like I can't believe how many. Yeah. I there was one day where I had to pack twenty five mm -hmm. items. I was like, well, because it, we oh, I did, put I, off I put off a day, three days, but yeah. it wasn't three days. Okay. I put it off one day, okay. so it was uh, a lot. And I think the funnest, the most fun item was a CD uh, player mm -hmm. that you found on the street and you yeah. sold it. So um, we said that there's a uh, – the cafe is in Harrisonburg, the other cafe. And uh, I was over there one day, and I parked in this parking garage that's downtown. And I walked by the trash can in the parking garage, and I saw this teal blue CD player, stereo tape player, you know, one of those. And I was like, that can't work. I mean, someone just put it in the trash. So I walk by it, and I go to the cafe. And Jill and I come to my car to get some stuff out of the back – and I was like, I'm going to grab that stereo and I'm going to plug it in and see if it works. And we were laughing about it because it's totally 90s. And it worked. And I was like, I'm going to sell this on eBay. How much did I sell it for? Uh, $50? $31.99. Oh, it was 31 <laughs> It was expensive to ship because yeah. it's going to California. But um, so nice. it's just funny. It's like one of those things where you're like, why did someone put this in the trash? Yeah. It can't work. I mean, I will say we sold quite a few items, almost 50 items, and that's a yeah. lot for us. But uh, I don't want to say they were low dollars. Some of them were not. We had high. nothing over $100, and yeah. most of them would probably hover, yeah, around the 30 or $40. I think my favorite sale is my, my cash that I found of those vintage markers. Oh my God. That was right three years ago. We're we, still selling. We, we still have so many. Box of 12 for $63. Like, uh, you can't beat that. Definitely long tail. Yeah, very um, long tail. Scavenge of the week. Uh, I bought a couple things on an online auction, but. 
I mean, we we bought two things. Yeah, but we have so much stuff. I mean, I can't. I, we can't buy yeah. anything. Our, I was uh, gonna go to the thrift store the other day, and our, I was like, our helper that takes pictures took off the week because he had football practice. So, uh, <laughs> you know, hopefully he will not. I really hope he doesn't quit. Yeah, because of school. Because <laughs> he's but, like too busy with school. Yeah, but hopefully. Although the other day we were hanging out with him and his parents just in their driveway talking. And um, he was like, I like going to work much better than going to school. Yeah. So I was like, please, I hope you don't stop working for me. Yeah, it's interesting. We, we were asking him if he was excited to go back to school. Uh, you know, as like people in get person. the vaccines and stuff. And he, he was like, seemed nope. like he didn't really want to. So <laughs> I know. It'd be interesting just to kind of see how that works. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, okay, let's take the calls that people sent in this week. Okay, you can call our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us an audio file from your phone. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. This is Laura from Dream Deals 123. I just had a long conversation with my husband who knows everything about shipping, shipping containers, import, export. And he said we should not worry about running out of toilet paper. European countries might have to because we get all of our shipping from the East Coast, from China, ships to California. Most of Europe get their goods through the Suez Canal. So when you hear that 12% of the world's shipping, the world's, uh, this is going to affect 12%, you know, what is being shipped, that's not really worldwide. It might be more like hardly affects us at all, but 40% of the shipments coming into Europe. Uh, my husband said especially things from China and oil and stuff like that. So I think that's just uh, interesting to keep on top of that. And the other thing is, if you're wondering how long this is going to take, don't listen to what the authorities are saying. Watch what the other shipping companies are doing with their shipments. Now, some things that are lightweight, they'll just transfer to air freight. But if it's heavyweight stuff like furniture and things like that, barrels of oil, whatever, um, that's not going to be economic. They're not going to be able to do that air freight. Thanks for all you do. I think this was the person that might have been asking us a week ago about... Uh, Oh, how it affects, yeah. Maybe not. Anyway, yeah, so ever since this call came in, yeah, the a Suez is now open for business. But who knows? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's a good, <laughs> look, it's a good conversation to have because as we saw at the beginning of the pandemic, toilet paper was low, you know, like, and that wasn't because of shipping or anything, but like there have been shipping delays, not because of this, but like to... Think of those things and build those into your life and know that they could happen and not take it for granted when like you buy something and it gets to you the next day. That might not always be the case. So we all I I feel like with the pandemic, with this Suez Canal thing, we should all be thinking of those things all the time. So like when I look at my tracking and something gets there on time, I'm like that's amazing. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, we've, be, before the pandemic, I'm sure we're a lot of, we're like a lot of people here. We've always had a big pantry. We've right. always had a lot of stuff. So it did as well in the pandemic. And we've just kind of doubled down. So we have big freezer food. We've got a big pantry. And we're we, always trying to do that have, now because you don't want to be caught have extra it. toilet paper. And not because I'm worried about my own butt. But uh, because we do have rentals. We have uh, rentals, and so I never want to be out. So we have yeah. plenty. Uh, it is interesting. I have talked to our uh, coffee partner, Phil, about, you know, we roast green beans in coffee. Imported from other countries. They get imported. We buy from an importer who's yeah. up in New Jersey. And normally, they're. I mean, they are always really good. We call them. They send a truck down. You know, it's about what six hours away yeah. or something uh then the uh, next day so I mean, we and we buy the next you know day. a big pallet like a ton of coffee and phil i mean he's not doing anything wrong but you know he's uh making sure we always have the uh, freshest stuff so he yeah. kind of waits till we're really low and then re-ups and i've told him i would feel more comfortable <laughs> situations like if we this. always have like three months of beans yeah. because these green beans are being stored in New Another Jersey. warehouse, <laughs> just store them in our warehouse, yeah. you know. So that way, I mean, that wouldn't necessarily affect if the Suez Canal, but I mean, we've just seen in the past but year other and a half, just like, yeah. seems like anything that could go wrong does, and I'd rather just, exactly. in case it's hard to get a truck to bring stuff to you if that goes up. So. Yeah, it's like ever since the pandemic 
started, you have to just think of these things in a different way. And this is another example of that. Hi, my name is Tiffany, and I'm calling in regards to a question I had about global shipping. Um, I have been selling for an antique and collectible store in Nebraska, and we have been doing quite a few international sales because we did um, find a storage locker that had a number of different artifacts in it. And so I'm finding that I have buyers who are buying multiple items from us on the same buyer, which for global shipping, I can't send a combined shipping invoice. Um, eBay has to invoice them individually. And, and what I'm what I'm doing as a workaround is I'm canceling the orders and doing a custom listing so that I can just sell them as one lot and then go ahead and ship them out together in one package. That way they get only one invoice from eBay. But then I have to cancel the other orders and it seems to skew the stats for the sales. Um, my question is, is, is there a better workaround for that? Am I doing the right thing? Is there a different suggestion that you might make on how I could handle that situation? Because we are getting quite a few international orders as our store grows. We're having people buy multiple items. And I'm just wondering, you know, if, if this is the, the easiest or most efficient way to do things. Thank you. I mean, the whole time, Tiffany, <laughs> the whole time you're talking and we're just shaking our head. Nope. Nope. We nope, get it. Yep, like, what you did was correct. Everything nope. There's you no say. other way. Look, I had, this is so annoying. Um, and actually, now that you said this, I need to contact this buyer and redo it because they bought two pieces of artwork. They bought them. I don't think they paid for them yet because it was an offer. They live in the UK and they're like, okay, send me a combined invoice. And I was like, I can't. Um, eBay won't let me do it. And they were so mad that they were just like, well, fine, just cancel. But now what I need to do is make it combined. I think right. we were so busy that I was like, I can't even oh, no. think about it. I didn't even yeah. I, I so, didn't even think about it. Just to be clear, like the, the, the hack, the right. workaround, and it's annoying, and it's you really annoying. have to have a dedicated buyer right. is you cancel the sale. You make a listing just for that person that says like paintings for Jim or yeah, whatever, whoever. and then you 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 put those two f- two items in there. in there, and then you hope that person rebuys them, right? And then you can ship them together. The problem is they might not rebuy them. It's open to everyone on the internet, so anyone at any moment can buy it. Right? Not that they will, but they can. Right? Uh, and it's more friction with the sale. So the, I think yeah. uh, wow. I think good eBay, word friction. It is yeah. though. It's because like it's a buyers, barrier, right? And so I'm not sure. I've never heard anyone explain to me why eBay is so adamant about not allowing a global because you can combine be, if you do if you do international priority USPS. They can combine it. Like you can send a combined invoice. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I wish they would fix that because it would be super helpful. I mean, the other option is just not to do global sh- shipping and just ship, ship through whatever. What's it called? eBay Send? No, do not use eBay oh, okay. Send. eBay Send Oops. is horrible. Okay. International, yeah. Just if you want to send it USPS International, I'm fine. But right. I like the guarantee with eBay Global Shipping because once you get it to Kentucky... Yeah, it's off your plate. Right. But the good news is, if Tiffany's dealing with collectors and they have things that are very specific, th- those kind of buyers are normally the ones who are willing to work with you to get what they want. To get what yeah, they want, exactly. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, I agree. I think eBay should fix this. Yeah. Hey guys, um, I hope you had a good week of sales. Um, I just have a quick question about selling sort of older vintage items. Um, We got into reselling, me and my soon-to-be husband, a few years ago, and we buy a lot of stuff. You can kind of scan at Goodwills and whatever, but we've kind of branched out, kind of tell more people now, and now we're starting to go to auctions and also, like, acquire big lots of stuff, like my parents' older neighbor moved out of his house and sort of got rid of a lot of junk that was in the garage, and we just took it all and I feel like when I go through uh, your store and your page, I get alerts because I follow it. Um, but I see, like, items that are vintage or maybe I feel like you got from auctions and 
um, are listed a lot higher than maybe I would have list because I don't know how to search them or I don't know exactly what they are, but they seem like a pretty generic listing and you're just kind of listing and forgetting it. I, I, I know that y'all do that, but I was hoping that you could give some advice on like, are there items that you get that you just don't know what they are or, and you just say, Hey, look, we've got these cool salt and pepper shakers and I'm going to listen for $35 and see if somebody buys them. Like, do you really research every item? Do you know what it is? And I guess I've been apprehensive a little bit about misrepresenting items. Like, how do you guys feel about that? Are you worried that you're going to post things that or say things in your listing that aren't accurate or, you know, whatever? So any tips and tricks you could give to trying to research, like, random old items that you get from an auction that would be awesome so i appreciate y'all and um, again i hope you had a great sales week thanks okay i'm gonna start yes i want I'm you to start I because wanna... i know you, you, you because <laughs> you're the one that ultimately puts a price on but i want your perspective here so i mean what she said is good questions i mean the thing is i don't have like a good like we're this is not science it's an art you yes know? for us the worst thing to do is to sell things too cheap, you know? So we would rather have things higher priced with a make offer and let people send us lower offers. And if we get a bunch of low offers, then we're kind of like, oh, that must be what the what the market is. But we would rather have it be high because we're patient, you know? I mean, I think that's the whole difference. There, People don't do it to us anymore. People get really mad at us. <laughs> I don't know why, but they get bothered that we were listing things really high. Like, this thing's so generic. Why do you have it up for $40? I'm like, because I'm not in a hurry to sell this thing. And we've time and time again sold generic things for higher prices than what other people do. So we'll get an item, some vintage plate, and you do a search for it, and you see solds, and you're like... but you know, a lot of them are cheaper, but we're like, but eventually those are all all the cheap people are going to get sold out and then we'll be the ones there. And so that's the way we price. Yeah. And it's funny too, because when you said something was priced high at $35, actually laughed out loud because I was like, you know, if you're thinking that's my high dollar item, Like I do, (laughs) and think of this for yourself too. You did a lot of work to go out and find that item. I pay someone to photograph, so I gotta pay that payroll. Um, I have to sit down and list it and I have to store it and then I have to ship it. If someone's willing to pay, and there's three of these on eBay, whatever they are, they're salt and pepper, or these are the only ones on eBay. Yeah, it's worth $35. Right. Or more. <laughs> if it's not, right. what's the point? Are we going right. to sell it for $12? Right. I do sell stuff for $12 sometimes. But that's because that's what we think that's the yeah, highest we like, can get for it. You know, yeah. and when you say the word generic, I don't, and you said that too, Jay, um, I don't really know what that means because I'm like. How about something that doesn't have, have a, like name, a name? Doesn't have a right. name. Okay. Like a so, unbranded. Right. Yeah. So for me, if there is a piece that doesn't have a name, is vintage. Like I can tell it's, it's not from Marshalls or whatever, which I've sold that stuff too. Fine. Um, you know, I'm going on the fact that it's not made anymore. It's unique. There might only be a handful of them. And someone might be... If you go on any of the forums, like mid-century, uh, antiques, vintage, like on Reddit or wherever, or there's one called Help Me Find This Thing, people are like, I had this set when I was a kid of X, Y, and Z. I, there's no markings. There's nothing. I mean, there have been countless times where I've gone on that forum and been like, they're on eBay. Yeah. Find it on eBay. Search for these search terms. and me and other people and there people are like yeah. what you know and you're like of course it's on ebay like I someone mean, had it in their garage three things number one we've been watching season four or five of fargo the the most oh my God. A recent which uh, took place in 1950 a, a season and you know they would have like scenes in like a diner or in a home and we're just the whole time we're like this is all, all eBay. ebay it's all eBay. all this 
old diner stuff can only be found on eBay. Like that's where they bought all that stuff. So, you know, the right. second thing is, yeah, you have to know. For us, it helps to have a picture of who our buyer is. Right, right. So these days, you know, we've gone from selling a lot of clothes. We don't really buy clothes very much. We still sell them. We still sell them, but we don't really buy it. Now we're into like decorative items. Housewares. Not so much collectibles. It's like decorative. And that's who our buyer is in our mind now is like the person decorating in their home. A designer. They're decorating someone else. They're a set designer and they want weird, unique items from certain periods of history yeah. that they want to put in their home. Right. And that's who I think is willing to pay $50 because you go to stores like William Sonoma and West Elm and Room and Board and Design Within Reach. I mean, they're selling these items new. That Based are like, on the old ones. That, that are reproductions of the old ones. And yeah. they're 10 times more than what we sell them for. So people are... Right. Happy to give us fifty dollars for an yeah, item. Cause you know? selling yeah, because they're selling at William Sonoma for one hundred and twenty. Right. And so I think that's what the problem with a lot of eBay sellers is that they're looking at something. Oh, it's kind of dirty. It's kind of old. It's got a lot of wear to it. Who's going to buy this? Some person who's going to give me ten dollars. Like they're thinking like they're selling in a flea market instead of thinking like they're selling in like a high end designer store. Right. And whether or not, and the only reason why I know that it works is because. We make money every week doing that. But it takes patience. I mean, yep. you know, call us crazy. Sometimes it takes three years for one of these things to sell. Or more. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it takes three months. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it takes three months. I mean, sometimes so, it'll sell in a day. So, you know, some people do the math in their own head and they're like, I'd rather sell this thing in two weeks for $12 then wait three years and sell it for $60. I mean, Fast I don't know. Fast nickel, slow dime. You just have to like make that choice as to what kind of business you want to run. And the fourth thing, third thing, eighth thing I want to say. <laughs> eighth thing. Is she was concerned of, well, uh, how do you know you're not over-promising or you're yeah. listing it wrong? I mean, just don't lie in your list yeah i don't i don't think i'm ever like we do good research yeah if it says made in china and it's made by some brand at marshall's i'm tell i'm saying that right i mean and (laughs) we i'm not saying it right and we put as much info as we know to be true on there and uh or or if it's an item that i'm like i truly don't know what this is i do my best um i've found some wooden objects that i'm like this looks like a spindle. I just some kind of wooden primitive. And then I kind of go from there. I'm not like trying to fake what it is. I'm just like, this is like a wooden spindle candlestick holder thingy. Yeah. I mean, so. If it's not, someone can tell me. Right. So you just do the best you can. But yeah, definitely you don't want to oversell something like yeah. you know, calling something sterling silver that isn't. That isn't. Or, yeah, or putting a brand on it when. It's clearly there's no marking to say right, it's that sure. brand. Like calling something like a a Wagner cast iron pan. Right, when there's no Wagner. When mark. there's no Wagner. Or, yeah. you know, people try and get away with it like Wagner style. Eh. eBay's like a no-no on that. But you got, you got to be real careful about something. Right, like so that. there are things like that. I mean, yeah. I will say, I, I do sometimes say <gasps> vintage style. Right. When something is, but a lot of times those will have, you know, like if you sell something from like anthropology mm-hmm. or, you know, they do these right. like boho vintage style and I'm right. like, I'm trying to say style instead of like it's yeah. old. Now there are times like that where I, I find it to be okay. Yeah. Um, but I think with experience, I know this is a very long answer. Clearly we're passionate about it, but I think with experience, you're going to feel a lot, especially going through, like you said, you got an entire storage unit of someone's stuff, like you're going to start to feel confident. Like this is old. This isn't (laughs) right. Like this is like, we found something the other day on the side of the road actually. And it was a box of like matching cups and saucers, but they were definitely made in China from like the dollar store. And we we actually gave them away and we're like, these are junk, you know? Yep. So, and you know, and just finally, yeah, there is nothing wrong with selling things faster at a lower dollar yeah just know you're probably selling to someone like us you know? <laughs> like when i it. when i would go to flea markets back pre-covid i mean i was buying stuff for cheap like really cool vintage unique items from guys with like a table yeah i'd be paying him 
five bucks. He's happy. He can fill up his car, go eat lunch. <laughs> yeah. And then I take that and sell it for eighty dollars. You know. Yeah. But he gets his money fast. I await two years. Everyone yeah, get happy. the money I want. We yeah. also. And there are other people that hear this that do this. You go on eBay and you buy a lot of yep. stuff. There are people who specialize in patches. Right. They go and they try and find the people who are selling a big lot of 500 patches. That guy doesn't want to sell them one She's by like, one. I don't even want to look at these. He's like, I just got these in the storage <laughs> unit. I want <laughs> to sell these on auction next week. For $100. Give me right? 100 bucks. He's happy. Uh, someone on eBay buys it, splits them up. Yep. Takes individual photos and yep. sells that lot over a period of three for years for ten thousand dollars. Right, and so it's just <laughs> kind of what you yeah. want. Like, what kind of business do you exactly. want to run? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I really actually love those questions, and um, yeah. I'm excited to hear more. I, w- I would love to hear what you found. I would love to see your store. So, yeah. shoot us an email. Okay, um, coffee talk. Any coffee talk? <laughs> oh, I wanted. I want to say. So we're roasting on Monday. Our limited edition natural Costa Rican, we have about three batches left that I'm going to be roasting. So it's like, what, 50 pounds? It's, 40 pounds. I think it's 40 pounds yeah, left of green beans. Pounds. So it's, it's the kind good. of coffee where it's not flavored. I, I, I just got to remember, like this isn't flavor coffee, but you open the bag. It's amazing. And it smells like strawberries. It's just beautiful it's coffee. something for how the beans are grown on the tree and whatever how they're processed the soil yeah and how it's processed it just smells really fruity so it's a lighter coffee and if you like that try it try it's, it it's it's kind of like in one of those coffees you just you know commodity coffees don't sell that stuff in the store so it's yeah. like a really special kind of uh, and it's almost gone yeah. I'm gonna be but sad. if you're also just wanting to support us yes and you also drink coffee for a living <laughs> i would suggest <laughs> Southern Split. Southern Split. It's like classic. A, it's like our favorite. I'm drinking it right now. It's like a medium to dark. It's just yeah. a good morning. Drink cup it of, black. Cup of Joe. Drink it black. Drink it with cream. Right. The natural that we're talking about. That's like strawberries. You don't want to put anything in that. That's right. like. And it's called natural because right. of how Sorry. it's processed. It's processed in like these. Coffee beans are in like a piece of fruit. Yeah, it's a piece of fruit. They pick the fruit. Right. People physically pick it. Yes. Then they put it on like a big piece of like, like concrete, concrete or something. And the natural way is you just l- allow the fruit to just dry on the bean. And then it gets washed off. And that's where all the flavors come yep. from. Whereas most coffee... They, are washed. Yeah, and then they put it through a thing that like tears off all the fruit. And right, then and then they it. dry yeah. it. So, um, so there's there's yeah. many different processes, yeah. um, but this one makes it... Different flavors. Fruity, fruity, yeah. fruity. So, um, yeah, we're going to be roasting on Monday, so okay. order early. All right, this podcast is ending in three, three two, two, one. one. Bye.